Uh, we could run that. So see here, we have our, our map that goes full screen. We have our list. Uh, we still can't click on these. We can zoom in, uh, but we can still click on these to get our functionality. All right. So now we get into the custom renderer. So custom renders, again, we have platform specific uh, rendering capabilities. And again, I'm going to copy them in. Our renders here. So Android, we just have one file. So we're just gonna copy that in. And I'll go through that, what they are. Windows Phone, we have a few more uh, down here. And iOS, we have this heritage property annotation and map view delegate are the same ones we used before. So we'll copy those in and then we have a map renderer for iOS. And then we also need to put our map renderer for our PCL. Okay. So that's gonna be where we're gonna, it's gonna set up kind of that dependency injection for us. Exactly. To pick the right renderer when we need it. Exactly. So the Xamarin forms will handle it internally for us. And then uh, Map Renderer 2, this is where we have all our messaging uh, taking place. So it's uh, the Xamarin forms messaging center. We want to subscribe to when an info window is clicked. Uh, and then we also want to send messages telling the custom renderer to say, hey, add these pins and zoom in on them okay. uh, on the native platforms. So, so messaging center really is like, um, setting up that observer pattern like uh, adding events. Instead of adding events, I'm using the, I'm, Xamarin gives me messaging center to create and handle these events in a cross-platform way. Exactly. Okay. So now the renderers, uh, I'm not gonna go through, so the renderers, uh, won't go through them too much, but here's our assembly export. Uh, and we're saying this is gonna be a type map render to Android, uh, specifically for Android. And the implementation is pretty much what we did uh, in the iOS and Android applications without Xamarin Forms. So we're gonna loop, uh, here we put a helper method to wait for map, because if you remember, we have to actually wait for the, the native map object before it's available. Uh, it does take a little bit of time. And then we wanna wire up the map, and then we wanna, uh, uh, when the info window is clicked, we wanna send a message back into the, um, uh, into the PCL, so then we could act upon it. All right. And then iOS is pretty much the same thing, except iOS specific implementation. Uh, so here it wires up the map, uh, and it, we set the heritage property map view delegate because that's how we get the events coming back from it. And Windows, we did same thing, uh, you know, a little bit code in here to add a push pin. But what we did is we did a custom push pin uh, using some custom XAML. So, and then some code behind from within here. Okay, so this is gonna change it to a pin instead of that black rectangle. Instead of the black one, yeah. So you're gonna see a pink type color pin on the map. And then before we get that going, we have to go into our main page and we have to set our member variable for map up here. So we have to set it to map render two. And then we're gonna change these, our load map properties. Right now, this is our implementation for load map properties. Uh, so we wanna change both of this and we wanna add some things in the constructor. So I'm gonna go in and add those. So this is to, instead of using the map, we're now using the map renderer too. Exactly. So okay. here it is, this is the only change we've done. So we've changed it to map render two because we changed our member variable. And then we have our on info window click. We wanna tell the, the view model that, hey, something was clicked. We wanna run this command and send the actual item into the, uh, into the command so it could act upon it and show us the details. Now our load properties has changed. This is all we're calling for load properties. So once uh, this method is called, it's gonna go into the map, it's gonna add and zoom in on pins, and then that's gonna send the message with the items into the native implementation. All right. So let's go ahead and run this. 
and there are our pins and there's a little info box that we have we click on it we could go in and out and this still works as expected and we'll see all the implementations on let's go android set a startup set it to mix platform and we'll hit start okay so again our 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 goal here was to minimize code duplication, and we've been able to take our initial project where we built it out uh, two times because we built the, the Android version and the iOS version. Yes. We've been able to compile that into one application doing everything in the portable class library except for these custom map renderers and the location, getting the lo GPS location. Yes, because everything in those are platform specific and you can't really do that in the PCL, right? All right. Because every platform that implements, as you see, getting location on Windows Phone is, you know, very easy, whereas in Android, it's a lot of code. Right. So. All right, so let's take a look at it on the Android. Yeah. So here it is. It just finished building and it de it's deploying. And here we actually forgot to set some permissions. So because we are using maps, uh, forgot to set a permission. So I'm just going to copy this app manifest that we have pre-built. And it's the same thing that we had before. Uh, if you watched uh, the Android module, uh, we just have to set a bunch of permissions to be able to use maps. So let's try this again. See, it's building right here. But yeah, even though I think, uh, you know, it is it is fairly new Xamarin forms, I think they made it, you know, fairly extensible. Um, you know, so as developers, we could go in there and we could customize things to the platform. Uh, as you see, we have different push pins on iOS, Android, and Windows, Windows Phone. Windows Phone, we even went as far as to set a custom push pin right. uh, within there. And there are other forms or control developers that can take these custom renderers and create new control libraries for Xamarin.Forms exactly. to, to build that out so we can now have controls that are, um, you know, nice bar graphs and exactly. uh, chart controls and those kind of things that go from device to device. Exactly, exactly. So it looks like we're up and running here. So here's our map uh, on Android. Uh, I'm going to click on one and we get the same functionality that we get on the other platforms. And because this is our last, we've actually done this project now, I'm gonna set this one just to see what it looks like on iOS. Uh, we'll go for iPhone, click start. So, so the, uh the library that made this helped do a lot of our code sharing. So we had the portable class library, but we were doing that model view, view model pattern. Yes. Right, and that's, that's really where we get a lot of this um, code reuse, right? We used MVVM. Do you know of any other MVVM patterns that can, or implementations that any, can be used? Yeah, there's other ones out there. Uh, MVVM Lite is uh, my preferred choice. Uh, it was recently updated, Laurent recently updated to the latest um, at Evolve. He updated it to uh, support uh, binding when you're not using Xamarin Forms. Uh, so one thing that you could do is you could start everything with Xamarin Forms, uh, but you could also keep building your application, uh, say iOS, you know, a lot of designers put a lot of animation and stuff. Uh, you could go in there and you could completely uh, customize the UI to have all that animation within, say, iOS or something like that. Um, looks like we're up and running here. So here's our iOS version. Again, we can navigate back and forth, switch between list views, and everything is the same across all the different platforms. All right, great. So now we will switch back, and that pretty much does it for this uh, for this module. All right. So we looked at uh, Xamarin Forms. We looked at some of the controls that you can be using. Uh, we looked at code sharing, both from a, 
uh, portable class library perspective, as well as kind of following that MVVM pattern, the model view, view model pattern, uh, and then building that around dependency injection. Uh, and then we, we rebuilt that entire uh, Heritage Properties application with uh, Xamarin.Forms, and I, yeah. I thought that was pretty cool that you know all three platforms, Windows, Android, and iOS, yeah. with, with that single code base. Yeah, I think it's pretty amazing too. All right. So. Well, that's it for this module, but we got we got one more to go with uh, testing, and we want to we want to look at how we're going to test this application. And so, in module five, we're going to look at Xamarin test. All right, I'm Brian Sherwin. I'm here with Mark Tega, and we are hitting our last module here for cross-platform development with Xamarin in Visual Studio. And this, in this module, we're going to look at automated testing and UI tests. All right. So what we're going to look at is uh, uh, Xamarin Test Cloud. It's a recently released product. So why you want to use Xamarin Test Cloud? Uh, we're going to see what you require to actually run some automated UI tests. And we're going to get into writing tests for our Heritage Property app that we developed in the previous modules. So why Xamarin Test Cloud? So essentially, this is your current device coverage for uh, in the US for market. So to get 75% market coverage, uh, you need to have 135 uh, devices that are out there. And on Android, I mean, these are the different implementations and different form factors that you have on Android. So there's quite a few out there. Um, you know, you can buy all these devices and test your application on there, but it's going to be quite a huge cost. And then every developer or every tester is going to have to run the test on every device. So with today's world, I mean, we have fast release cycles. If you're building mobile apps, you know, people expect your apps to be updated. They want your apps, uh, you know, quick release cycles. Uh, they're using your app in short sessions or bursts, and they, you know, they have high, high expectations on your application. And if your app doesn't cut it, you know, they will let you know in in the in the reviews, in the App Store, in the in the Microsoft Store, or in the Google Play Store. So automated UI testing is, you know, it's a good way to ensure your app looks and behaves, performs well on as many devices as, as possible. So now, uh, in one, uh, we have some quadrants here, you know, high test realism, simplistic tests, long cycles, rapid iterations. So in the top left quadrant, we have beta testing and manual testing. So this is great. You have physical people beta testing your app, manually testing your app. But that could that, that could cause issues. You know, you need uh, larger budgets to run tests, uh, beta testing. You know, you send it out publicly to uh, beta testers, and you hope that they test it and that you have full coverage in there. Then you have unit testing. So you could unit test. You know, we built uh, MVVM uh, our app using MVVM. Build your unit tests. Uh, you know, get some good test coverage in there. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, it, it's only testing your logic. It's not testing any UI interaction within your application. And then you have automated UI testing where you have high test realism and rapid iterations and you automate your tests that are uh, to test the application on real physical devices. So where do the tests actually run? So with uh, Xamarin Test Cloud, you could run your tests uh, locally and you author your tests locally. So you, you, you set scenarios for, you know, if we're on this screen, this should be visible, it should do this. And so you set all these scenarios and you, you write up your tests. And then once those tests are written, you could push them up to Test Cloud to, to run on a bunch of different devices over, uh, I think currently the count is over 1,000 devices. Uh, Android and iOS, and these are these are physical devices that those are running on. Right? Yes, they're physical, real devices that they have uh, in their in their labs uh, that it runs on. Right. So when you're running your tests, what you do is uh, you could send various user interactions. So you could send tap, you could send swipe, pinch, multi finger, text entry. Uh, you could even set GPS and set rotation. So these are you know real interactions that a user will do for your application. So you want to test all these scenarios that are in there. 
So to in uh, one of the great things about Test Cloud is you can incorporate it into your continuous integration environment. Uh, you want to shorten the, the feedback. So essentially, when you do a check-in into your source code repository, you know, you want your test to automatically run. Uh, it can integrate with DFS, with Jenkins, with Team City. Uh, so once that check-in is, is there, you pull that code, you run your test in Test Cloud, throw it up on you know, over a thousand devices if, if you want to, and then you get a response back on whether those tests pass or failed. So this is a great way you know, do weekly tests or do uh, a test on check-in uh, and just automate the entire system. Uh, so then you have no manual testing anymore uh, with users. So what do you require? So with Xamarin Test Cloud, you require a Test Cloud license. Uh, you need Xamarin UI test. Uh, you know, written in C-sharp. So you're ri writing all your tests in C-sharp. Uh, you could also use Calabash and use Ruby, uh, but I like using C-sharp. Uh, and then you need a test cloud agent. So on iOS, you need to run a test cloud agent and you need to initialize that in debug mode. Uh, this is for iOS only. With Android, you don't actually have to do that. And then you could run the test locally uh, on the simulator with a no API key, uh, so you could test that. So you could get the the UI the Xamarin.UI test from NuGet, download that, and you could start writing your test. Don't provide an API key; you can only run it on the simulator. Once you want to start running locally on a physical device, then you need to provide an API key. All right, so I can run my tests locally on my devices, and I can do that completely free of charge. But if I want to go and, and upload these automated tests, 